you are welcome to this lecture and we'll be looking at other quantities and the other level in the last lecture we've been able to see the importance of inventory in an organization in a company or a firm we've seen the procedure from uh, requisition to purchase to receiving to accounting and valuation We've seen the various controls that can be used to control inventory. Now we are moving a step further today and we are looking at the order quantities and then the reorder levels. Firms buy inventory from suppliers. So and it's it's at a particular cost. The essence of looking at this topic is to determine what other quantities are we going to make that will minimize our cost of ordering for inventory now there are so many reasons are due for holding inventory or holding stocks or keeping stocks by a firm but principally among them is to meet demand of customers is to make production demand where a company is a manufacturing company it owes raw material to meet production invariably it's held for profit motive because by the time demands are met profits will increase so those are the three reasons for holding inventory or stocks now there are four categories of cost associated with inventory we have the purchase cost that's number one we have the ordering cost that's number two we have the holding cost that's number three and then we have the stock out cost but much we'll be talking much about holding cost and ordering cost but let me just chip you in on the other two purchase cost is the cost of acquiring the inventory okay we want we hold that for a raw material and the supplier supplied it at the rate of 10 naira per kilogram that's the purchase cost if we buy 1000 kilogram we are paying 100,000 dollars so take note then stock out cost is the cost of being without inventory at a particular point in time yes there's cost attached to it the cost of emergency purchase emergency purchase the cost of lost sales because customers will go, go elsewhere lost or damaged goodwill those are examples of stock out costs but we are dealing principally with holding cost and holding cost so what are holding cost holding cost is also known as carrying cost so you may see it there it's also known as carrying cost holding cost is the cost of carrying inventory in the store and it includes the interest on capital tied up in inventory cost of storage or warehousing then cost of insurance cost of insurance then we have the cost of pilferage theft as well as other kind of loss natural loss that can result as a result of keeping the stocks in store then secondly we have and um, lastly sorry we have ordering cost there is cost of placing an order is the cost of placing an order so please take note the cost of placing an order and it includes the administrative cost of the ordering department the delivery cost the transportation cost is part of ordering cost okay now for the purpose of our uh, lecture the total annual cost for inventory is given as total ordering cost plus 
total carrying cost let's go to our worksheet total carrying cost total annual cost for inventory is the total ordering cost plus total carrying cost the total ordering cost is given as annual demand is given as number of orders then let me write it out well number of orders times ordering cost per unit and the number of orders is given as annual demand over the order quantity times ordering cost per unit while the ta total carrying cost or total holding cost is given as average stock that's q over 2 times the holding cost per unit per annum so take note another thing is that the holding cost can be given in some question as a percentage of purchase price so take note okay now let's look at this illustration a company uses components at the rate of 6,000 units per annum which are bought in at a cost of 1.2 pounds each from the supplier the company orders 1000 units at 1000 units each time it places an order and the average inventory held is 500 units it costs $20 each time to place an order regardless of the quantity ordered calculate the annual holding cost and the ordering cost okay now the question asks us to calculate a company the question asks us to calculate the total annual ordering cost the total ordering cost is the number of orders placed times ordering cost by unit and the number of order place is given by annual demand divided by order order quantity annual demand is given as 6000 units over quantity ordered per time we are told that the company orders 1000 units each time it places an order divided by 1000 units times ordering cost per unit it was twenty dollars so that's six times twenty dollars and that gives us one twenty dollars then the total carrying cost or holding cost per annum is given as the average stock times holding cost per unit. The average stock is it given to us? Okay, the average inventory held is 500 units. It's given to us directly in the question. But if you if you are not given in the question, you can calculate it. It's given as the quantity ordered per time divided by 2 and that's even 1000 divided by 2 which is the 500 given in the question so 500 times carrying cost per unit per annum okay the carrying cost per unit per annum are we given that we were given the purchase price but we were not given the carrying cost per unit okay that means we have to make an assumption yeah let's make an assumption carrying cost is 20 percent of purchase price or purchase cost you would definitely be given in the question so let's say this is an omission you would definitely be given in the question so let's roll on 20% of the purchase cost is 1.2 dollars times 20% 0 0.2 times 1.2 dollars so that's 
point two times one point two times five hundred. That's also one twenty dollars. So that is annual carrying cost. Okay. So let's move on. Now let's look at another important concept economic order quantity EOQ economic order quantity this is the order quantity that minimizes the balance of cost between the total ordering cost and the total holding cost I repeat is the order quantity is the order quantity that minimizes the balance of cost between the total holding cost and the total holding cost so EOQ is the most optimal quantity the order quantity that minimizes the cost of these two categories but it is based on some assumptions it assumes that the purchase price is known and constant it assumes that the ordering price ordering cost is also known and constant it assumes that the holding cost is also known and constant it assumes that replenishment replenishment that is when the order is delivered replenishment is instantaneous that is is we order today we are given the goods by the supplier today those are the major assumptions of EOQ and those are some of its limitation as well now the EOQ is calculated using this formula to the CO over CH in the square root D is the annual demand or demand per annum. CO is the cost of placing an order. CH is the carrying cost per unit per annum. And so Q is the reorder quantity, the EOQ. So take note of that. Some questions can give you demand a month. You have to multiply it to make it per annum. Some questions can give you holding cost as a percentage of purchase price. Take note or it can give you the holding cost differently where you have to sum it off before you use it so take note of that same narrow as well and then the question can ask you to calculate any component of the total holding cost or total carrying cost like the average stock or the number of orders placed in a year like I have explained earlier so take note of that as well now let's look at this question economy uses components at the rate of 500 units per month which are bought in at a cost of 1.2 dollars each from the customer it costs 20 dollar each time to place an order regardless of the quantity or that the total holding cost is 20 percent per annum of the value of in inventory okay the company should order how many components and what would the total annual cost be okay annual demand annual demand is 500 units times 12 and that's 6,000 units per annum so our EOQ is 2 DCO over CH square root that's 2 times annual demand of 6,000 times ordering cost of twenty dollars divided by the carrying cost is twenty percent of so zero point two times one point two all in square root so that gives us as one twenty thousand to forty thousand divided by zero point two four into square root so what's our EOQ So our EOQ is 1,000 units. 
Awahio Q is 1000 units. So the company should order 1000 units components per order. Now, the total annual cost will be the addition of the total ordering cost and the total carrying cost. So total annual cost will be total ordering cost plus total holding or carrying cost. And total ordering cost is the annual demand 6000 over Q 1000 times ordering cost per unit $20 plus average stock 1000 over 2 times carrying cost per unit 0 0.2 times 1.2 so that's this is 120 plus 120 so that gives us a total of 240 total annual cost as 240 dollars and like I said earlier on you might be given questions where you will need to calculate these various components before you move ahead to calculate your EUQ for instance the ordering cost per unit you might need to calculate it maybe the question gives you the cost of 10 orders then you know you, you have to divide that cost by 10 to get the cost per order then the company might give you monthly demand you have to convert to annual demand then it might give you the demand in different units maybe a component in a pack you understand where you have to make the conversion to headline so that you get the current answer so you have to just be very very careful and take note of those things all right let's move on now eoq with discount you know one of the assumptions of the economic order quantity is that the purchase price does not change and that means that the, there is no discount on from the supplier on inventory purchased but now we are relaxing that assumption to make it more realistic that okay if there is discount from the suppliers that means the purchase price will change and does that affect our EOQ does that affect our quantity ordered per period or is it the EOQ that is still the best almost optimal order quantity now with the change in purchase price it means that it is not only the total ordering cost and the total holding cost that are relevant again the purchase price the total purchase price or purchase cost is also relevant so the three prices will be used to evaluate a discount option where it is given by the supplier now let's look at this illustration okay before that okay the annual purchase price will decrease that's the effect of discount the annual holding cost will increase the annual holding cost will decrease yeah that's the effect of quantity discount so take notes you can be asking the short answer questions the purchase price will decrease because of the discount the holding cost will increase because we might likely order more and then hold more we might likely order place a larger quantity of order and then hold more and then the annual ordering cost will decrease because the number of times we will order will reduce now let's look at this illustration the company uses components at the rate of 5000 units per month 500 units per month which are bought in at a cost of 1.2 dollars each from the supplier if the cost is twenty dollar each time to place another regardless of the quantity ordered it costs sorry it costs twenty dollars each time to place another regardless of the quantity ordered the supplier offers a discount a five percent discount on the purchase price for quantities of two thousand items or more the current EOQ is one thousand units the total holding cost is 20% per annum of the value of inventory held. Now, what's the purchase price of the inventory? 1.2. Okay. Now, we've been given the value of EOQ here, but you might need to calculate the EOQ yourself earlier on. 
okay now quantity now Op option option one or proposal one we are we ordered 1000 units that is the hero queue then there will be no discounts and the purchase price purchase price the number of quantity we used per annum is 500 dollars 500 units sorry for a month for 12 months times 1.2 that's the purchase price then the total ordering cost the total ordering cost will be the annual demand divided by quantity at 6,000 annual demand is 6,000 divided by 1,000 times ordering cost per unit that's 20 dollars so that's 120 dollars and then the total carrying cost will be average stock 1,000 over 2 times 10% of purchase price that's 0 0.24 are we together okay so that's also 120 dollars okay the purchase price now 1.2 times 6,000 what do we have now 7,200 dollars so the total cost for the quantity there is 7,200 dollars plus 240 that's 7,000 four hundred and forty dollars okay seven thousand four hundred and forty dollars now the quantity if quantity of two thousand items or more two thousand units we have five percent discount so the purchase price is going to be six thousand annual demand times five percent discount that means we are paying 95 percent of that price 1.2 times 95 percent and that gives us what 0.95 times 1.2 times 6 thousand now 6840 then the total ordering cost will be annual demand of 6,000 divided by 2,000 quantity times $20 per order so that's that's how much $60 that's $60 and then our total carrying cost will be the average stock 2,000 divided by 2 times don't forget it's now 10 percent the carrying cost is 10 p per unit is 10 percent of the purchase price the purchase price is now 95 percent of 1.2 that's 1.14 so 10 percent of 1.14 0 0.1 times 1.14 and that gives us how much times 0.1 Oh, sorry, twenty percent, not ten percent. So, point two times one point one four times one thousand. That's two two eight. Two two eight. So, what is our total cost? Two two eight plus sixty plus six eight four zero that gives us 7128 so the total cost where we we'll take the discount is 7128 and then where we did not take the discount is 7440 so definitely and rationally discount should be taken because it's going to cost lower for the company so I hope you understand the process it's very easy just follow it up and you'll get it thank you now let's move further to another concept 
also related to the economic order quantity the economic batch quantity EBQ economic batch quantity now one of the assumption of EOQ is that replenishment is instantaneous but you know it's not really always true that replenishment will be made immediately the order is made so it's because of that that um, the economic batch quantity come to play that where the productions are where replenishment is gradual or production are in batches so the replenishment cannot be made immediately I, they are in batches and that means replenishment is gradual for instance now in a manufacturing concern so the EBQ is much more appropriate than the EOQ the EBQ model is primarily concerned with determining the number of items that should be produced in a batch compared to the size of another with the EBQ now when replenishment is gradual like we have under the EBQ the formula is a bit modified as we can see it here 2DCU over C H or C C times 1 minus D over R into square root D is the annual demand C O is the cost of setting up a batch ready to produce and then D is the annual demand R is the annual replenishment rate our Q now is the economic batch quantity or the batch size produced per period now let's look at an example the following is relevant for item X production is at the rate of 500 units per week demand is 10,000 units per annum evenly spread excuse me <coughs> evenly spread over 50 working weeks setup cost is 2700 dollars per batch and storage cost is 2.5 dollars per unit for a year calculate the economic batch quantity for item X don't forget our EBQ is given by the formula 2DCO over CH times 1 minus D over R into square root okay now our annual demand is 10,000 units per annum so that's 2 times 10,000 units times CO is the cost of setting up a batch that's $2,700 over CH is the holding cost per unit per annum $2.5 times 1 minus D is the annual demand of 10,000 divided by R is the annual replenishment rate. The replenishment rate, we are told that production is at a rate of 500 units per week. So, 500 units will be available per week. How many weeks in the year? They said 50 working weeks. Okay. If there are 50 working weeks, then annual replenishment R is going to be 500 times 50 and that's how much 20 how many units 25,000 units so divided by 25,000 into square root that's 10,000 that's 20,000 times 2,700 let's find that out from our calculator 20,000 times 2,700 that's 54 million 54 million over 10,000 divided by 25,000 that's 0 0.4 1 minus 0 0.4 that's um, 0 0.6 so 0 0.6 times 2.5 that's 1.5 so divided by 
into square root so 54 million divided by 1.5 then the square root of our answer that's 36 million divide find the square root of 36 million our EBQ is 6,000 units so just take note we are the replenishment is in batches then you talk of EBQ not EOQ so you have to look at the question very well is the question asking you to use EOQ or EBQ before you go ahead and calculate your answer now one more thing I would want us to know before we move on is that EOQ and EBQ can be estimated from graph but I'll just show us the illustration using EOQ for instance you know EOQ is made up of total holding cost and then total holding cost total holding cost and total holding cost we say those are the two relevant costs in EOQ okay so assuming we have a graph on the vertical will be the annual cost and on the horizontal the x axis will be the units now we say the ordering cost decreases as our order the ordering cost decreases as the number of units ordered number of units ordered increases so it is downward sloping the ordering cost is downward sloping total holding cost but the car holding or carrying cost we say it increases as the quantities order increase increases because it's directly proportional you know it's per unit so it increases to this is the total holding cost so the point of intersection is the EOQ is the EOQ or the EBQ now uh, the total cost if you the, the total relevant cost is the uh, summation of the two ordering and holding if you try and graph it it's usually U shape but it's higher than the two total annual cost and then the lowest point of that cost if you trace it down it will fall exactly at this point as well and that's how you are given our EOQ so please take note of the graph as well because the question might just ask you to interpret the graph or ask one or two things from the graph and can even ask you to trace the EOQ from the graphs drawn okay let's move on the next thing we're going to look at is the reorder levels. A reorder level is the level at which the level at which an order is placed. At which order is placed for replenishment. That's the reorder level. Replenishment. When the stock or inventory reaches this level immediately the order and order must be placed a reorder quantity must be placed okay now some other concept that we need to know about is the late time the late time the late time is the time lag between ordering for inventory and replenishment the time lag or the period between ordering and replenishment that's late time then the other quantity is the quantity ordered per period quantity ordered per period is usually the EOQ or the EBQ like we have um, analyzed then the demand the demand is the annual consumption of inventory by the firm or the company okay I've talked about the reorder level that's the level at which 
another is place for replenishment then the maximum stock level or maximum inventory level this is the level of inventory that is considered most desirable above which above which a check must be made because it constitutes an excess investment in stocks if stocks move above this maximum level then there is excessive investment in inventory there is too much money is being tied down by inventory and something must be done quickly then the minimum stock level also known as the buffer stock is the stock level calculated to take care of uh, inconsistencies in estimating the lead time the is the stocks put in place to mitigate the effect of wrong estimation of the lead time for instance if you have estimated that lead time is going to be two weeks and it actually went on to be five weeks the additional three weeks what are we going to be using is this minimum stocks or the buffer stocks that we're going to be using during that period so let's see the calculation for these various control levels that we are talking about the other level the other level is given as the maximum demand or maximum usage times maximum lead time that's the reorder level then the maximum stock level is given as reorder level plus reorder quantity which is usually the EOQ minus minimum usage minimum usage times minimum lead time while the minimum stock level is known as the reorder level minus average usage times average lead time so those are the three control levels that are used in inventory control to guard the organization's investment in stocks now let's look at this illustration a company uses component M at the rate of 1500 to 2000 per week a week rather the time between placing an order and receiving the component is three to five weeks the reorder quantity is 12,000 units calculate the reorder level maximum level and minimum level okay before we go ahead to calculate let's bring out they said the question says a company uses component M at the rate of one five to two thousand per week so demand demand is 1500 to 2000 units per week okay now that means that the minimum usage during that week is 15 maximum usage is 2000 then the average usage will be found by adding these two together and dividing by two or you might be given directly in question but if you are not given a question just add the two extremes together and divide by two then the lead time the lead time that is the time between placing an order and receiving the components three to five weeks the reorder quantity the other quantity is twelve thousand twelve thousand units then we cannot go ahead to calculate the three control level let me write the the reorder level the other level is given as maximum usage times maximum lead time and what is the maximum usage from the question 2000 units and the maximum lead time 5 weeks exactly so 2000 units times 5 weeks so the reorder level is 10,000 units the next control level is the maximum 
torque level which is given as the reorder level plus the reorder quantity reorder quantity minus what minimum minimum usage or demand times minimum lead time so our reorder level is 10,000 units like we have calculated plus reorder quantity I think we are given in the question the other quantity is 12,000 units 12,000 units minus minimum usage minimum usage is 1,500 minimum lead time is 3 weeks 1,500 times 3 so that's 22,000 minus 4,500 well, that's how much 17,000 500 units so that's our maximum stock level then minimum stock level minimum stock level is given as the reorder level minus average usage times average lead time and the other level as calculated is 10,000 units Abby, minus average usage we have to get that 1,005 plus 2,000 that's 4,500 divided by 2 4,500 divided by 2 no, it's 3,005 thank you 3,005 divided by 2 that's 1,007 1,000 that should be 1,750 1,750 units okay so 1,750 times average lead time let's find that out 3 plus 5 that's 8 over 2 that's 4 average lead time is 4 so that's 10,000 minus 1,750 times 4 that should be 7,000 confirm okay I think I got it right 7,000 units and that gives us 3,000 units so these are the uh, the three control levels the question can also ask you to calculate the average stock level average stock level you know is at the average stock level like we have calculated is the reorder quantity reorder quantity you know we used to use the EOQ but well, we've seen that if there is discount and some other things like that it might not be the EOQ that will be the reorder quantity so reorder quantity divided by 2 is the average stocks excuse me for that but where there is buffer stock or minimum stock or safety stock then you can you have to add that to the amount calculated minimum stock don't forget it's also known as safety stock and buffer stock so from our question the other quantity is 12,000 divided by 2 plus 3,000 units so that's 9,000 units 9,000 units the question might also ask you to calculate the free stocks the free stocks so let's take note the free stock is calculated as physical stocks physical stocks in hand plus units or that quantity or that minus units yet to be issued to be issued now give us the free stock at hand the units yet 
to be issued is also known as inventory requisitioned so take note these are some other things the question can ask you to calculate I hope you understand that okay